So let's talk a little bit about the Canon 1DC. This is a sort of rambling quick review of what I think of the camera, my experience with the camera so far, and what its uses are in 2022. So back in 2011, I think it's 2011 they announced this, it's, it's basically a Canon 1DX, which is the top of the line photo camera, announced to be the first 4K essentially DSLR ever made. So before the GH4, which I think was the first mirrorless 4K, uh, the 1DC was announced and it was huge. It, well, I mean, it was a huge amount and Philip Bloom did most of the promotional videos. Uh, it was out of the range of most normal human beings at around 16 to $17,000. And as of today, you can get these for between a thousand to two thousand dollars really so is it still worth it that's what i'm going to talk about and i have a couple of samples of this so far uploaded on this channel and i'll, I'll tell you what i think so this is a traditional dslr with the mirror so meaning that when you're using it like a still camera you you have no viewfinder here that you can use while you're you're actually filming video because the mirror is locked up. Um, that is nice usually for collecting dust, but if you've looked at my other sample videos, you can see I, I did get some dust on the sensor. Uh, additionally, it's got that old style LCD where you can't move it out of the way. So what I've been using it with is the, the Deskview R6. And what's actually nice about the size of a camera is you can lock it into your body and hold it there's no image stabilization here either, either electronic or, well, you can do, this is a Tamron lens with VC. You can use IS or, or VC or anything that's got optical stabilization in the lens, but you won't get it anywhere else. Unlike the newer Canon camera, cinema cameras that have electronic image stabilization. So holding it steady is, is fairly easy like this with a, a camera with a monitor on top, but then you lose the ability for other accessories. Uh, some other things here of note are, it, it's completely weather sealed, so you're not gonna find a more durable camera, at least even today. I, I doubt there's anything that's really built that's more durable than this, but you're gonna need, it has two CF card slots. You're gonna need to use uh, at least a thousand X CF cards. And there's no dual recording, so what you get on one card, you get on the other. And that brings to the next point. If you're using this in 2022 versus all of the other competitors, you're going to want to use the 4K mode. I mean, if you want to use a 1080p camera, there's a million other full frame options out there. But if you're, you're getting this in 2022, you're probably going to want to shoot 4K. And the nice thing about the 4K on this is that it's... Uh, it's, I guess the easiest way to say is organic. The way to measure dynamic range between the manufacturer and what you actually get that's usable has seemingly changed over the years where Canon's newer cameras say 16 stops, but in reality you only get 13 and a half or so. Uh, with this, I, I think you actually do get around a usable 12, 12 and a half stops. And um, it's again it's not super sharp but it's not also blurry it, it's kind of like a smaller alexa and what i like about this and the original c100 which i'm shooting this on now which if it detects my face hopefully it keeps me in focus i doubt it even using a face detect lens specifically sometimes it doesn't recognize me as a face but that's another another day another issue um Back to the 1DC, also no autofocus at all in video mode. Yes, you can shoot stills autofocus, but when you're in video mode and you lock up the, the mirror, it's completely manual. So most likely, unlike what I've been doing, you're gonna wanna rig it up with something. And if you wanna rig it up with something, you're probably gonna figure out a, a, a different power solution uh, where these use these older style, the, uh, E4 and E4N batteries. I'm sure there's some alternate power solution for this that's been used, but if you're all rigged up, I could see that being an issue switching batteries along with the CF media because it's on the direct back of the camera. Um, other things to note here. So 
So with the video quality, uh, it's not the fastest rolling shutter in 4K. You can go to the crop mode. Again, I don't know why you'd use crop mode on this for 1080p because there's a million other options that are probably even cheaper than this now. But in 4K mode, it's around 25 milliseconds for the rolling shutter. So it's about the same as the, the 5D Mark II, maybe a little bit faster than that. So if you're playing what pans around, this is the wrong camera for that. I, you know, most, Decent cameras now are at least 15 milliseconds or so, and there's, if you want to get into what film is, film essentially is around 5 milliseconds, so if you're looking for that film style image um, while doing whip pans, this is not it. Uh, the thing about this, though, that why it interested me is just that image quality. So once we get into image quality, then we find another downfall. You have to shoot MJPEG. It's around 500 megabits or I forget the conversion, but you get around 30 or so minutes on a 128 gigabyte card, which isn't much. And then you have the MJPEG codec, which is horrible for editing. So just like a raw camera, you're going to be converting this. And what I've found for a at least a, a temporary useful way to deal with this footage is actually to stick it in the card reader, a USB 3 card reader, and then use shutter encoder to encode, encode it to ProRes 422, and you could do that as the offloading step. So uh, that's about half the size of the native files, and you don't seemingly lose anything while you don't have to deal with MJPEG anymore, which might have strange color space issues. Um, going back to the camera, it does have HDMI. HDMI works for uh, live viewing. Uh, I don't know about playback or if you would even do that. It has a full LAN port, which is cool. I don't know what the actual use of that in 2022 is. Uh, most of the newer cameras have Wi-Fi, but I mean, if you could actually use LAN for something or transferring files, that would be nice. You have a mic in port and um, a headphone jack usable for video. I haven't used them. I probably would use an external recorder regardless because back in this era, uh, the audio recording uh, wasn't very great, but you might be able to get by with this. So uh, lots and lots and lots of downsides. This would not be anyone's primary camera. So you would never switch this to a primary camera, but it's an interesting secondary B camera um, that shoots C-Log. I think this with the other, I don't know, they had some of the other profiles. This is probably just a 1DX with a bigger heat sink and, and different firmware. I think that's all that the 1DC actually honestly was. Um, but, you know, from a teardown, so the bigger heat sink is going to keep it from overheating. The, the run times with this battery, I got at least a couple hours shooting back and forth, walking around, and then capturing a full card. So I can capture a full card's worth per battery. So if I were planning to shoot with this all day, I would have a battery probably for each CF card that I plan to fill, depending on what I was shooting. Um, this is EF with a mirror. So if you're using EFS lenses, like I, I did in my other video, um, you're gonna make sure that your EFS lenses don't extend further out than the EF flange, otherwise it's gonna hit your mirror. Not all EF uh, cameras are like that. And if you have PL mounted uh, EF PL lenses, those might go in too deep into the mount and break your mirror. So definitely check that flange distance before you put a, a PL adapter on this camera. It sounds like a lot more downsides than upsides, but um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting camera. It has an image that you don't get anymore, and I don't think you'll ever really get it again. It's kind of a unprocessed image. And today's cameras are all super clean, super detailed, and very processed looking, where this one really isn't processed looking. I, I think they were going for that Alexa style, and I think that's why I like this native image so much. So wrapping up here what I would say is if you can find one of these cheap or rent one of these cheap try it out see if it works for you 
um, see if it works for you as a B cam or some uh, other type of camera and uh, go from there because I, I've had a lot of fun with this camera. I continue to have fun with this camera and I don't see getting rid of this camera. I wish it had a million other features on it. I wish it uh, could be hacked with Magic Lantern just like the C100 but that's never going to happen. Um, but I, I really do like the, the, the default C-Log image quality out of it.